The countdown for India's third lunar mission, Chandrayaan-3, has begun. There is a flurry of activity at the spaceport ahead of a launch. But what are the processes that will take place? Right, absolutely. What is the countdown meant for? And to explain this to us, Vion Senior Correspondent Siddharth MP spoke to the chief of the Indian Space Agency. Listen in. India's third lunar spacecraft Chandrayaan-3 is all set for launch. But let's understand what goes on at the spaceport in the run-up to the launch, the countdown and other procedures. To talk to us about this, we have none other than ISRO chairman Dr. S. Somnath. Sir, please tell us, uh, ahead of the launch, what are the kind of activities and uh, you know processes that happen at a spaceport? First thing that you would have noted that the rocket moved from the assembly building the launch pad. So it is a long journey. Though the distance is short, the dis time is long and finally it reached there, it was anchored. So after anchoring, then uh, the vehicle will have to be connected to the, the ground systems. There are so many connections we do. Connections for electrical powering, electrical checking, that's what we call electrical umbilical. Then we connect all the pneumatic umbilicals, which uh, service uh, rocket for gas, liquid and other filling. Then there are two cryo arms, which will get mated to fill the cryogenic fluids, like liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen filling. Then we have cooling connections which will cool the satellite and other electronics on board so and there are oil filling connections from the ground and there are lift off sensing connections so all these are done and verified then we power the entire rocket from the checkout room far away five kilometers away then check go through a process of checking to see the interfaces everywhere is proper and we run the simulation of the rocket of launching standing there but we'll run uh, it's called uh, a, a flight simulation runs and then see everything is working well then we connect to the ground station there are many radars around these radars will start receiving data from it in the standing condition we check whether all of them are working then there are some network checking so it goes on like that for next many days so what is the exact purpose of a countdown because each countdown is unique 24 hours 36 hours 27 hours what is the purpose and why is this time changing no, countdown is a function of what are the activities there. So if the activities are to be done in a systematic and sequential manner, which is well defined, so that we at the end, we have to reach the launch time. When you have launch time reached, that nothing left out, no, undone. So we define a process by which different activities do take place and different checkpoints are identified. And there are teams which will work without any, there is no need of any communication further. Once you start into countdown, everybody knows what is required to be done. At, and they don't sit in one room to do. It is actually spread out, not only in Sri Rikota, it goes to other centers of ISRO and world over, including ground stations. So the communication links are established, the entire simulation ha happens. And similarly, filling has also in its algorithm and process which has to be done. So, and battery charging, alignment, there, there are many activities. So these activities have to be done in a time-bound manner. And based on, for each rocket, this will differ. That's why this difference. Sir, LVM-3 is also among the most sophisticated rockets in the world because it uses solid, liquid and uh, cryogenic fuels. So tell us about the complexities of handling such a system, which ISRO has now mastered. See, everything is complex in its sense. Uh, solid propulsion is also complex because uh, there, it doesn't mean that at the launch pad there are no work, it is simple. But to make it, it, it is much more complex because many years of you know, effort is required to make it. And once it is made, it is very simple, it will work. Whereas cryogenic stage is also complex in terms of mechanical engineering, but it is complex from the thermal and fluid interactions which are taking place. And the timings are very critical for it, for flow, etc. The sequence of how that is done, switched on and starts without causing an explosion is the key of the whole cryogenic process. And again, again, we must have good understanding of thermal, physical, characteristic of the entire materials which are used. There are so many varieties of materials used. And everything has to work in a time-varying temperature, time uh, parameters. So sometimes, somewhere it will be hot, sometimes, somewhere it will be cold. And that doesn't happen uniformly. So you have to understand all of this. So that is the crux of the whole of the cryogenics. Again, its ignition is a very tricky thing. Hydrogen oxygen doesn't, though it ignites, it has to be ignited in a very particular manner. And you have to raise it from a pot, low, dense, low potential of threat to a, the, the required no operative point. If you do not move it in that line, it will explode. Uh, so this is a trick of it. Whereas solid, the trick is that the, the grain or the propellant is huge. It is 200 tons of propellant. And how the propellant stands there without falling through the hole. So it has to have an integrity of being there inside the rocket while it is firing and still take the thrust and acceleration. So its mechanical design is important. The propellant's mechanical design is important. And how it connects with the, st uh, the structure is important. It has to transfer its own mass and load to it without getting extruded. So, and even processing of 100 tons of propellant in a very 
property variation to be least minimum. So this variability handling is a crux of the whole of solar propulsion. Then thermal management is equally critical. And you know other engines, the called hypergolic engine, that it has its own uh, traditional problems of handling very very dangerous propellants which are uh, for humans it is dangerous so we cannot have access to it and it has to be handled with a very absolutely no leak the problem in propulsion is leak and the problem in electronics is noise so we normally tell like this <laughs> thank you so much that was dr s somnath explaining us the complexities of a launch vehicle and how virtually every field of engineering uh, known to mankind has to come together to ensure that one launch happens flawlessly from bengaluru siddharth mp we on world is one